everyone, welcome back to Hope for Today. Thanks for joining me. I am glad you're here. As always, God has a plan. I am always amazed on how he gives me a thought. You just, just a little whisper, a little thought on what he wants me to share with you. And it's always something that I relate to. So if no one gets anything out of this podcast or any of these podcasts, he's always made sure that I got something out of these podcasts. So today I want to talk about where do you find your hope? You know, I spend a lot of time on the phone with a lot of guests that call in to America's Keswick, where I work. I know some of you are familiar with Keswick, and I also know many of you are not the Ke in the Keswick circle, let's say. You're an outsider coming into a podcast, and you don't really know about America's Keswick. So let me quickly tell you, America's Keswick is a Christian conference center on one side of the campus, and then on the other side is an addiction recovery center. The Addiction Recovery Center is over 120 years old. The Conference Center is going to celebrate 100 years next year. And that is where I work. And so a lot of people from the podcast or come to our events will call on the phone and have a really rough day, and want to ask for prayer, want to talk. The guests get to know us on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We become friends with them. We have them on our Facebook. We connect. It's awesome. But so many people, including Christians, are feeling there's no hope. You turn on the news, you, you everything, everything, you know, <clears throat> everything from the prices, <coughs> excuse me, the prices of things to food shortages to, you know, wars, rumors of wars, you know, the way everybody's, just the way Americans are behaving. Excuse me, one moment. Allergy season is upon us. And people are just... You know, going to church, even just trying to, I was listening to someone on a podcast the other day and they were saying even going to church, trying to find a good friend, they moved to a new area and she just said they can't find friends. And even when you go to church, people aren't as friendly and cordial. People don't think to invite you over anymore. And when you're feeling kind of down and hopeless, that's pretty tough stuff. And, um, you know, you want something to hang on to. You want that anchor in life to hang on to. You want that that thing, that something, the somewhere, that a place, a moment in time, a person or something, you'd want to just feel that that's your safety net, that that's my rock. And uh, I was thinking of a time the other day, I was, I was talking to my husband about this, and if you've been to America's Keswick, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been to Keswick, kind of just imagine, I work, one of the buildings I work in is called the Activity Center, and it's a huge, building. It has an indoor swimming pool. It has a gymnasium, racquetball courts, weight room. We have meeting rooms. It's a big building. It's a solid building. It was built 32 some years ago. And it, you know, it has the basement with the sub pump that's built in a huge building, like solid, solid building. A building where if there was a tornado, I wouldn't think twice, hang out in there and you're going to be fine. <clears throat> well, the one day I'm working there. So picture this structure that you would picture like your safety net if, if things were to go bad this is where to go and I was working at the desk there and the desk is very long and it has like you have to walk all the way around to get behind where you sit at the computer long counter so I was sitting there and we're doing my work on the computer and felt like a weird sensation I guess you'd say and I looked up and the chandeliers that are humongous like probably I don't know five feet long, I don't know, they're huge, are swaying, not just moving, they are swaying in the wind. And I'm thinking, I, I've just lost my mind. I mean, I think if a truck hit the side of this building, it would even make a twinge. And these chandeliers are swaying in the air. And I first thought it was me, like maybe getting dizzy at the one in front of me, and then I looked down the hall, and they're all swaying. And I'm like freaking out in my head going, what? What, what do I do? What just happened? What is happening? And then all of a sudden, I got another weird sensation and I could feel the floor. My feet were on the floor and I felt the floor like ripple I, and it like turned my stomach. It was this rippling feeling. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, am I the only one experiencing this? Well, it was so frightening. I'm on a desk chair, like an office chair that has like the, the legs at the bottom. I lifted my feet up and I put them on the legs of the office chair and I just like held onto the chair like I didn't know what to do. Like it was, it, 
we're talking a matter of seconds. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, my chair starts to roll down that side of that front desk that I was sitting at. And that long counter, if you've been in the activity center, you know it's a long counter. My chair is rolling past the desk, out past the desk, down the hall, as I'm holding on. And the chandeliers are swaying. I was freaking out. So I it, finally everything settled and you're you know and I walked outside the building and I was like looking around and you know bright and sunny it's beautiful what's going on and then you hear different staff members on the radio calling there was an earthquake in New Jersey if it affected Pennsylvania now we didn't get any major structural damage or anything like that but I don't live with earthquakes I've never experienced an earthquake and to see these chandeliers in a building that I would say was rock solid swaying and to feel this ripple under the floor and to see my chair, I had absolutely no control over the chair that I held onto, it just rolled as the, mo the earth was moving. It was really scary. I don't know how else to say it. It was like something that I will never forget. And here is a building that I thought, oh, safety. You know, a rock of a building, nothing can happen. Tornadoes will go in there. And here I watched a building change and transform as this earth moved underneath it sway the chandeliers move my chair i felt the floor ripple underneath me it was amazing in a split second how things happen it really reminds me <clears throat> again excuse me for my throat it reminds me of how much hope and stability i need in my life i don't know about you i I have prayed for hope. There are times where I feel very unsettled in life or unsettled about a decision or unsettled about a moment. And I'm like, Lord, I need hope. I don't know how else to say it. And I'll say, Lord, send me hope. Just that's what I say. So Lord, remember a few weeks ago, I talked about just yelled the name of Jesus. Jesus, I need hope. And that's all I have prayed for is I need hope. And God will always send me a postcard. That's what I like to say. He sends me a postcard. He sends me a postcard of a coworker might say something. The phone could ring. I get a card in the mail. Um, it's been interesting. I also speak on a different platform outside of Keswick, something on a personal level, and I will get random cards from random people that I've never met. I've only known them through the camera. And they'll send me a card thinking of you today, and they'll send me a Bible verse, or just thinking of you, and, 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 and send a beautiful card and a little sentiment. And like words of encouragement that came out from somebody I have personally never met other than through the camera they know me and they have been able to contact me with a card or an email or something or I just I could be shopping and a song comes on or these whispers that I get hope and the Lord always seems to you know and I know I know I know that was meant for me because it just it fed my soul in a way that nothing else could where does your hope and your stability lie? Where do you go to feel like you've got hope, that you've got a rock to hang on to? I have learned it's not in people. As much as I love my husband, I adore my husband. He is my rock, ish. But there are days he, you know, fails me. Uh, my husband has a disability, full-time disability. And there are days my husband might be physically in the house but emotionally, mentally, and every other way, he's not there. You know, there are people that say they're a single mom. I call myself a single wife. If you have a spouse on disability, you can understand what I'm saying. You feel like a single spouse, that your spouse is there, but they're not there. And I could go days and weeks sometimes without really having my husband with me. Can I put my faith and my trust and my hope and my stability in that? No, because I just fall to pieces. I crumble. People have moments, you know, remember, I'm going to hang on to that moment. You can't hang on to that moment. That moment is almost a moment in your imagination, and it probably wasn't that, and you can't hang on to that. You can't hang on to a place. Like, I was hanging on to that building that that was rock. You can't do that. I have a favorite hymn, and I'm going to close us out with reading that hymn. But I want to let you know, number one, Jesus Christ is the only rock that you have. That is it. If you don't know Jesus in a personal relationship that you and him have made a covenant between the two of you, that you've accepted him into your life, that you know that you're a sinner, 
You know he died on the cross for you. You've accepted the fact that you have nothing to offer at all. Only the fact that you've accepted him as your personal savior, that you want that. That is the only thing that's going to get you to heaven and to allow you to have the privilege and the honor of sitting with the Lord, the King of Kings in glory forever. If you don't have that personal relationship, that's number one, you got to get it right. Number two is if, you know, yeah, well, my Bible reading has gone down the tubes and yeah, praying, well, I pray, you know, I pray once in a while when I'm having a bad day and go to church. Well, <clears throat> you don't understand my church. No, I don't understand your church, but the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves. We need to be in church. If we're not in the perfect church, know that you're not the perfect person. I, I, I don't want to sound so, you know, harsh about that, but you need to be in church. You need to be reading your Bible and you need to be praying and you need to be living for the Lord and you need to be growing in the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants for us. He wants the best for us. And we as Christians tend to just take that for granted that eh, it'll be okay. Yeah, yes, you have salvation. Absolutely. No one can take that away from you. But why not show the Lord some appreciation, some gratitude for what he did on the cross for you? He died on the cross for you. He took your name to the cross. And yet we take it for granted and we kind of brush it aside that we need to grow and serve him and love him and go to church and all the rest. We kind of take that for granted. I want to read to you in Psalm 18 too. Here's a verse for you to hang on to. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. He is my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me and a place of safety. I want to read that one more time to you. If you have it a moment, I want you to look up Psalm 18 too. The Lord is my rock. We talked about a rock. Who do I hang on to? Only the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my fortress. He's my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. Do you ever feel like, I, you know, like a little kid, you always felt protected under your mom and dad's hands and now you're an adult? Who likes to be an adult sometimes? There's no fun in it. I don't always feel protected. I find that is the only place I find my protection. He is my shield, my shield. He protects me with that shield. The power that saves me, only through the power of Jesus Christ can we be saved and my place of safety. Next week, we're going to talk about feeling safe. So I hope you come back and join us for next week. Right now, I want to close with a hymn. Many of you will know this hymn. Some of you, maybe not. I grew up the hymns and I grew up in the, with the choruses on Sunday school. And I am so grateful. I hear people young and old that have gotten saved later in life in the last several years. And all they know is uh, praise and worship. I love praise and worship. Love it. I love all of it. But they don't know the joy and the, um, I guess joy. I don't know what another word to say what the hymns are like. Growing up on the hymns, those things have stuck with me. And this is a song that I will sing over and over in my head when I'm having those days where I feel hopeless. The solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath is covenant, his blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come with trumpet sound, I'll may, mm, kind of gets to me. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I hope you have found your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and then after that as your rock on who you can trust every day 
go and study up on that hymn, read that hymn, sing that hymn. Go on Spotify, Pandora, whatever you got to do if you don't know that hymn and listen to it. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad you're here. Thanks for your, I know you're all busy. I know. Taking time out of your busy schedule to see what God wanted you to hear today. So we'll catch you all next week on the next podcast.